In this video, I'll introduce you to our new solution for adding additional digital and analog I.O. to our drive products. Our I.O.210-BC Remote I.O. Bus Coupler. The I.O.210-BC Bus Coupler communicates using either Modbus TCP IP or our own RTMOE, Real-Time Motion over Ethernet Communication Protocols. The bus coupler is supported for use with our MCI-210 machine control integration module and our PTI-210 motion control integration module. I'll demonstrate how to connect power to the coupler, how to assign an IP address to the coupler, how to wire a digital input, how to wire a digital output. So if you're ready, let's get started. The bus coupler provides user connections for both system power and field power. System power provides power to operate the coupler's processor as well as the control circuits within the I.O. modules. Each bus coupler can provide system power up to 1.5 amps. If more power is required, then an expansion power module is available. Each bus coupler can support up to 63 I.O. modules. Field power provides power for the I.O. modules. The size of the field power supply is dependent on the amount of current required by the field devices that are attached to an I.O. module. The circuitry within the bus coupler is capable of operating with as much as 10 amps DC current. System power for the bus coupler is 24 volts DC. Plus 24 volt DC for system power may be connected to either terminal 0 or terminal 2. 0 volt DC for system power may be connected to either terminal 1 or terminal 3. Connect earth ground to terminal number 4 or terminal 5. Plus 24 volt DC for field power may be connected to either Terminal 8 or Terminal 9. Zero-volt DC for field power may be connected to either Terminal 6 or Terminal 7. Ideally, you would use separate power supplies for these connections to ensure electrical isolation between the power supplies. Each bus coupler must have a unique IP address. There are two methods that you may use to assign an IP address. They are using the bus coupler dip switches or using the device discovery tool that's built into our Machine Control Studio software package. The default IP address for the bus coupler is 192.168.1.100. The advantage to using the device discovery tool is that it permits you to modify the subnet that the bus coupler will use. If you elect to use the dip switches on the bus coupler, the subnet is fixed at 192.168.1 and may not be changed. The bus coupler has a bank of 10 dip switches that are located immediately underneath the two RJ45 ports along the left edge of the coupler, as shown here. As mentioned on the previous slide, the default IP address for the coupler is 192.168.1.100. The subnet for the coupler will be fixed at 192.168.1, but you may use dip switches 1 through 8 to change the last octet of the address. Dip switches 1 through 8 are interpreted by the coupler as binary weighted switches with switch 1 being the least significant bit. The valid range of addresses for any octet in an IP address is from 1 to 255. To use the dip switches to set the last octet of the IP address, you must first turn dip switch 10 to the on position. Then, you may use switches 1 through 8 to select the value for the last octet of the address. Examples are shown above. The black colored rectangles denote the position of a switch 
with the on position being up and the off position being down. System power to the bus coupler must be cycled anytime you change the IP address using either method. I'm going to demonstrate how to use the device discovery tool in Machine Control Studio to set the IP address for the bus coupler. But before I do that, it's important that you understand how the device discovery service works in the first place. What I mean by that is whenever you want to use the device discovery service to set an IP address, you should always set a static IP address on your computer to your desired subnetwork first. Let me show you. I'm going to open up the settings and show you how I've got mine set up. Properties and then IPv4. There. So as you can see, I've got a 10.10.1 subnet set up. Now my computer will be address 10. What's going to happen when you use the device discovery service is any devices that it finds is going to use this subnetwork for the base of the IP address. So I'm going to open Machine Control Studio now, and I'll show you how that works. All right, to invoke the device discovery service, I'm going to click new project from network scan right there. And here's the device discovery service. I'm going to stop it for a minute because I want to show you these options. By default, you have the option of having the scanner scan for any devices that are connected using serial communications. By default, this box will be checked. I've unchecked mine because I don't have any serial devices on my network. And then in the Ethernet tab, it's going to display all of the available network adapters on your computer. Well, to speed things up, I've disabled Wi-Fi because I, I don't want it to scan Wi-Fi for any devices. So I'll click OK now and scan again. Now this is what you would expect to see. What the discovery tool is telling you here is that it found two drives, or two devices I should say. Neither of them are on the same subnet that my computer is. So as you can see, here's the bus coupler. So I'll begin with it. I'll click configure. And I'm going to make this one 20. So it's going to check to see that that's available. And it is. I'll click apply. All right. Notice this message. It says addresses have been changed. Please restart the scan to update. Well, I'm going to do that, but I'm going to go ahead and configure the drive IP while I'm here. So I'm going to make that 30. That too is available. And I'll click Apply. Now notice it picked up on my Digitax M750, but not the bus coupler. So I'm going to scan again now. And this time, it got both of them. So I'll click OK and Machine Control Studio will build the framework for my new application. And there it is. There's my drive. There's my MCI 210. And if I scroll down, there is the IO 210BC bus coupler. So that's how you use the device discovery tool to set the IP address for the bus coupler.
I am using a model number GT-1238, Universal Digital Input Module. This module is universal because it can be used in either voltage sinking or voltage sourcing mode, depending on how it is wired. The diagram on the right shows how I have wired my module. In my example, I'm using the module in voltage sourcing mode as I'm switching plus 24 volts DC with respect to DC common, which is connected to one of the module common terminals. To utilize voltage syncing, connect the switch to DC common and connect plus 24 volts DC to terminal number 8 or terminal number 9. I am using a model number GT2328, 8-channel sourcing output module. The diagram on the right shows how I have wired my module. Notice that I've installed a reverse bias diode across the coil of the relay. It is very important to do that anytime you are supplying power to an inductive load, such as this relay coil. Unlike the input modules, output modules are not universal. If you require a voltage sinking module, please use the model number GT-2318 module instead. To summarize, Ensure that the DC power supplies that you choose for the bus coupler are sufficient to handle the current drawn by the devices that are attached to the bus coupler. If more current is required, an expansion power module is available. The IP address for the coupler can be set using either the dip switches on the coupler itself or by using the device discovery tool that's part of Machine Control Studio software. If you elect to use the device discovery tool, be sure to set a static IP address on your computer that will be compatible with the subnetwork you wish to use for your machine. Always cycle system power to the coupler after updating the IP address. Thanks for watching, and more importantly, thanks for choosing Control Techniques.